Heart disease affects uh, all populations to a huge extent. It's one of the leading causes of death and disability uh, in the United States and across the world, particularly when it comes to uh, how it affects different uh, groups of people. There are some uh, current disparities. For example, uh, uh, African Americans have a higher uh, risk of death related to cardiovascular di disease, and that's uh, around the 30-33% range increase compared to the rest of the population. We also have other groups of people, including Hispanics, that have a higher uh, prevalence of certain risk factors that do affect the outcomes, uh, including obesity, type 2 diabetes mellitus, and uh, we tend to see cardiovascular disease sometimes developing earlier in this population. There are several risk factors that are uh, well known and that are addressable. There are risk factors like age. Men are at high risk compared to women to develop cardiovascular disease. We cannot do much about those, but uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus or diabetes mellitus in general, hypertension, high LDL cholesterol, low HDL cholesterol, our uh, tobacco abuse exposure, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, particularly central uh, type obesity, are associated with a higher risk of developing uh, cardiovascular disease. So going after those risk factors is extremely important. Uh, it is well, uh, the mainstay of treatment, diet, exercise, and optimizing those risk factors. So uh, cardiovascular care has uh, advanced quite a bit over the last 50 years. We have developed significant improvements in medications, particularly that have uh, been able to uh, decrease impact of cardiovascular disease in patients, quality of life, as well as, to some extent, lifespan. Uh, that includes cholesterol-lowering uh, uh, medications like statins that have anti-inflammatory effect. They decrease the inflammatory process that leads to rupturing of plaque uh, in the arteries that tends to cause acute clotting events. If it's in the heart, that leads to a heart attack. If it's in the brain, it leads to a stroke. So uh, those risk factors being controlled do help quite a bit. There are new developments uh, in medications like uh, uh, PCSK9 inhibitors, uh, VASEPA, uh, SGLT2 inhibitors for diabetes, and uh, endovascular treatment for cardiovascular disease has significantly advanced. Now we're able to address certain complex blockages uh, that are not responding to medical treatment with endovascular techniques that before would be uh, hard to uh, address or complete. So we're able to have much more uh, comprehensive care for cardiovascular disease nowadays. Well, I think uh, in this uh, day and age, 2022, a lot of changes are occurring across the world. COVID-19 has given us a lot of opportunities to reflect on what is important in life and how we should best care for ourselves on the planet. That includes uh, understanding the responsibility that we each, we each have in caring for ourselves. So uh, I strongly believe that optimizing uh, our risk factors, diet, exercising, taking good care of our bodies is imperative to maintaining good health.